بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم hello everyone and welcome to this is football welcome to another stream uh, guys we're going to be talking about the specific club in this video yet again um, yesterday we done the Arsenal review today we have the United and the Liverpool review you know we're keeping you guys as entertained as possible during this international break um, you know the last international break of of the season um, you know Gareth Southgate possibly future Man United manager possibly possibly um we're going to be talking today all things Man United um first of all this guy uh, captain Sal how am I awake so early brother it is 3 10 p.m over here it is 3 10 p.m over here so I am I am really not awake early I'm I'm this is like midday for me there's literally three day, three hours and a half left till I eat you know so there's just not not much left for me anyway in in the day till it's like sunset you know so big up to all of you guys hit the like button subscribe to this is football if you're to do so keep getting involved in the chat keep letting me know your opinions and of course today we're here to talk man united and to talk man united we've got on one of the icons of of football youtube uh not just uh you know actually one of the icons of youtube in general one of the people who started all this stuff to begin with, um, you know, the match reactions, the content. You guys have seen me on Straight Facts. You've seen me on, on his match reactions multiple times. I'm going to be on Straight Facts after this as well. Um, joining us on the channel is the man, the myth, the legend. Here representing Man United. Today the roles are reversed. Today I will ask questions and he will answer. <laughs> Man like Terry is in the building. How are you doing, Terry, brother? Yeah, I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm uh I'm enjoying I'm actually enjoying the international break. It's a, it's a, a bit more of a relaxed week for me. I don't have to stay up till one, two o'clock in the morning watching games, <laughs> editing videos. So yeah, I, I enjoy the little lull, if I'm being honest. So yeah, I'm all good, my man. Yourself? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm really good. You get me second week of, of Ramadan, getting used to it now, just you know, it's just like part of the life now to just like not eat and drink and stuff. I'll be honest with you, as a smoker, the worst part for me is smoking. Mm. Like if you tell me right now you can smoke, I would I would go, I would fast, no problem, easily. Like, you know, but that's the first thing, like as soon as, because you get like that nicotine addiction and stuff and it's just bad. That's why kids in the chat listening, do not smoke, do not pick up the habit. It's the worst habit you can pick up. You know, you need to get rid of that habit as well. Uh, if 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 you're you know, you know smoking, I've never actually tried it once in my whole life. Never even one puff. Never. And Bad my trend. reason wasn't health or lungs or anything. Do you know what it was for me? I had a teacher Smell. that smoked, and she stunk. Oh, and yes. I just remember being a little kid, and I used to think, "Why would you want to do anything that makes you smell?" I I couldn't. I couldn't fathom it. It never made like logical sense in my head, so I never tried. And yeah, I'm bad, bad friends are the worst thing in life, Terry. They're the worst thing in life. We were going to a school barbecue once, and we had like kebabs and beef and everything, and we were just eating. And there's this guy who gave me a mint cigarette Ooh. after eating all that meat and stuff. I was <laughs> like, yo, it just hit. And ever since then, you know, it's been, it's been. I've actually been smoking almost ten years now, which is insane, you know. So. Jeez. Me too. Yeah, I need to try stop. I need to try stop doing this. First, I'm gonna get my six pack out. When I get my six pack out, I'm, I'm gonna stop smoking. Then you get me. So I have at least a bit of margin for error, you know, in case I get I gain a bit of weight after quit smoking. So yeah, that's that's what I'll say. Um, anyway, we got people in the chat already. 150 people in here. Like, share. I want you guys to hit that share button as well. Subscribe to this is football and. Let's just get to it. Let's ask Terry first his general thoughts on Man United this season. So before we get to specifics, before we get to specific questions, let me just ask you from a general perspective, how you feel about your club this season? It's a mixed bag, to be honest, because it's been a horrendous Premier League season. In my view, we should have kicked on and we haven't. The, the, the medical team has been a disgrace. We, we find out the last few days again, Casemiro said, look, I can't play. There's a pain. We checked him and scanned him and looked and said, there's nothing wrong with you. You're fine. He went and got a second opinion. They found a, a small tear. So if he'd have played for us against you guys, that could have been a big tear. End of the season. That's happened to multiple players that have come back from operations with problems and it hasn't been fixed. So you, you've had some internal issues that have been a, a bit of a problem. Our Champions League campaign was an embarrassment. 
FA Cup runs looking quite nice at the minute. We're probably going to make the final. So that's an area that I, I am happy with. The way we handled Liverpool the other day was beautiful. I absolutely love that game. But of course, we've had the sort of partial takeover of Ineos. And that probably for me has, has thrown a lot of cold water over a lot of the fires that are going on because I'm fairly hopeful that come the summer we can draw a line and say, yes, that's all happened, it's it, but then it's in our history and we're now on the road to try to improve the, the culture. We're bringing in some really good people to help run the club. So I feel as though there is some genuine light at the end of the tunnel right now. So that's probably stopped me from being as frustrated with my club, if that makes sense. But it's been, look, on, on the pitch, it's not been good enough by any stretch of the imagination. FA Cup runs good. Of course, the emergence of of young Kobe Mainu is something to be excited about, which which I am, not only from a United fan perspective, but he's English as well, and he'll play for our, our nation as, uh, hopefully in the next few weeks as well. So, yeah, there's a few good things, some really positive things, but these positive things for me are more about hopefully drawing a line under what we've seen again this year and really progressing and moving forward. I think with with uh, with with like generally what's happened at Man United this season. Every time you look you look at the Premier League table, you expect them to just be a lot lower than what they are right now. Like you look at the Premier League table, and you're expecting Man United to be like hugging Chelsea and stuff. But like you're almost there as well. That's the weird part for me. Factually speaking, factually you could still get Champions League football because neither Tottenham nor Villa are that consistent. So like. It's not even that far away that you could get Champions League football. So, like when you when you look at, at at Man United, you always expect them to be a lot worse than where they currently are. And right now they're in the position where they're like, okay, you just don't understand what's going on. The thing is with this Ten Hag situation, and obviously we, we do have to talk about him because he's he's. <laughs> I wouldn't even say he's polarizing. I feel like a lot of people are just done with with Ten Hag now. I don't even think it's polarizing anymore. I think with with this Ten Hag situation as well. Um, the thing that 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 is is mad, and you know, it's funny because you actually asked me this question on straight facts, and I and I gave you a similar answer. I was like, if it's not a better option than Ten Hag, then it's just maybe just get people to make footballing decisions around him, you yes. know, um, to 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 make the club better instead of him making the transfer decisions. But when you when you're linked to people like Southgate, and when you're linked to People like that with with the Ten Hag situation. What what do you make of Ten Hag this season? Obviously, he was po polarizing probably earlier on this season. Now he's no longer polarizing. I think it's probably seventy. Yeah, I, I, look, I think that the, yeah. The, the win against Liverpool obviously lets a lot of people go. See, told you this guy has got something. Um, uh, <laughs> United are scary. <laughs> I like that. I like that from Big Six Vance. Big up. Uh, big uh, up there might be months. Yeah, big up yourself, my bro. Big up I think yeah. that um, there'll be some okay. people that still want him in and they'll see the win against Liverpool and say, see, you can do it. Now, I'd agree, I agree to a certain point. So I've said for about two months now, I'm reviewing every game in two ways. Win, lose or draw is how I'm judging the day. If we win, I'm happy. We lose, I'm sad. But in terms of do I want to keep the manager, it has to be based upon the team's performance. And I thought there was lots of parts against Liverpool where I was really happy with the performance. Now, for the next two months, we continue to grow from that point. Performances get better. Sustainability gets better. Uh, team chemistry gets better. Then there is a conversation to have to go, do you know what? Get better football decisions around him. Buy players that his system needs. And let's give it another year. Especially... If it's only people like Southgate that are interested in the Man United job. But if we get to the end of the season and it is still, there is still no system, you don't know what you're going to get on any given day. You have to move on from him. You can't grow, in my opinion, from that situation. And although people say, I know that Sir Jim has spoken about how Arsenal were patient with, 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 with Arteta. Maybe in the first 12 months, it was like, oh, is he a pragmatist? Is he going to play more expansive football? But by his second, first full year, you started to see what he was trying to do. It wasn't quite working. He was losing games, but you could see what he was trying to do. With our manager, generally speaking, I can't see it. And some people say they can, and fair play to you. I can't see it being uh, working. So we have to assess that. In, in that way. The infamous 316, basically. Yeah, yeah. and, and I sort of I look at it through that, that that lens where we just need to be really honest as Man United fans. 
I want it to work for Ten Hag. I'd love him to turn it around because well, if, if he turns it around, it means Man United is successful. But that's what I want, is Man United to be successful. And I don't have an agenda against Ten Hag. I have no hatred towards Ten Hag. But we have to be honest about the performances. And I, I'll give you an example. I'm going to ask Staffy about this later on, straight facts. But I watched the full Portugal-Sweden game yesterday. Portugal, mm -hmm. by the way, they're always a team that's mentioned when it comes to Euros and World Cups. I think they've got a genuine chance of winning the Euros in the summer. They have a very good team. Roberto Martinez has them playing amazingly well. And I watched Bruno Fernandes last night, as I've done on a number of occasions when watching Portugal. And he looks a different player in that Portuguese team. And we say this as Man United fans. Generally, we say this about players we like and we ignore the ones we, we dislike. But so many of our players leave the United setup, go and play internationally, and we go, where was this guy? Even to a degree with Scott McTominay. This season, we've utilized him more as that kind of secondary striker. Yeah, honestly, he's bags from Scotland, to be fair. That's but, not but, a but we were trying to play him as a DM while Scotland were playing him further forward, and he was reaping the rewards for Scotland, and we were looking at an average, beyond average DM. And I just look at it and think, so many of our individual players leave, look really good for their national team consistently, but come back to Man United and don't look the same players in any way, shape, or form. That, for me, is a system issue that for me is about who you're picking to play alongside each other because as the great sir alf ramsey said the, the, the england manager that won won the world cup you never pick your best players you pick your best team and i sometimes feel with ten Hag, he picks either his favorites or he picks the players that on paper are the best maybe yes. the best I'm not saying he does use his FIFA, but it's like he takes the FIFA ratings and goes, well, I'm going to pick you 11 because you've got the best score. <laughs> but are you actually picking the team that blends together the best? I, I don't know if he does because we always look so dysfunctional to a point where the three teams, four teams in relegation, often they don't have players anywhere near our level. They don't across the board. But they look more organized. They look better in possession. They just don't have the star quality. Where well, we have a lot of star quality, but we don't have any type of system that marries it all together. And I think Man United fans, that's that's where I lose people lose me with their arguments that yes, better players and more people being fit make us play better football. But there should be the the burning embers of a system, irrespective of who's fit. There just has to be. That's why Liverpool have still been successful through this period of injuries and AFCON and the Asian Cup because the youngsters come in and there is a clear... They're not walking into a system they don't understand because there's a clear pathway and there's a clear um, sort of overlay of what they do. Where with Man United, it, it, that doesn't exist. And I think as a club, we need to build that. And typically, when you're trying to rebuild from literally the ground up where we are, you're better off removing all the moving parts that currently exist and starting again, as opposed to try and sort of plug and play on something that's already started, that hasn't quite worked, that's already got problems. So as much as I, I don't want Ten Hag to fail, I have to be really honest and just say, I think the quickest and fastest way of us getting back to the top is starting again from absolute scratch. The only thing you can't start from scratch with is a squad, because you cannot get rid of 26 you players. And, 25 players yeah, yeah. yeah, you can't fight, sell, sell 25 by 25. We've seen that fail. M more of all, from an FFP point of view, you're going to end up breaching anyway. So, yeah, it, we, that's the only bit we, that's going to take a bit of time. But backroom staff, decision makers, medical team, coaching staff, I would say start the whole thing, especially the medical team. The medical team annoy me more than Ten Hag. <laughs> but three players this year returned from injuries. They've, they've kid them the all clear, and they're broken down again because... The, the original injury didn't heal properly. You've got the Casemiro situation. How many other players this year have had injuries because the doctors have looked at them and gone, you're fine. <laughs> They've run out on the pitch and that little tear is ripped. Or, yeah, it's crazy. We've got to fix all these little things. You know, the thing is with with, with this with this Ten Hag situation, I feel like um, with, with, with the direction that we're headed in right now, um, you know, as... Football fans just looking at all these managers in in around the world, bro. Some of these managers because now, big up to troops as well in the chat. Big up to 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 you guys in in the chat. Make sure you are liking. You know, with yes, with troops. with with the managerial situation, it's just exactly what what you just said. <laughs> I I feel like sometimes though, with the moving parts, with the whole moving parts thing, 
there's something I disagree with, with you on. What oh. if you get a moving part that isn't even better than the current shit moving part that you want to get rid of? And I'm not even using the Southgate example just for 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 to laugh or anything because it's a genuine possibility. It's a possibility. Mm. It's not impossible. It's not likely, but it's a possibility. There's. You look at the managers around the world right now, and this is the thing that actually me. I think me and you have had this conversation probably three weeks ago, and it's manifesting right now as we speak. You look four years ago, five years ago. If you needed a new manager, you could have named probably four or five life-changing managers that would come in, change your club, change, etc., etc., etc. Now you look at the available options, it's really probably, you know, 95% a risk market and the other 5% are like people who are proven but a little bit washed up, a little bit not as good as they used to be before, you know. And then you've got the, you know, maybe better options like an Inzaghi from Inter as an example. I think that's a fair, that's a fair shot for a for a good for a good mm. option. But other than that, Terry, and this links to the Southgate situation, you're talking about replacing the moving part. There are certain moving parts that you've been linked with. I know Man United are gonna get linked to everyone, but there are certain linked. It's the same with us, by the way. We're getting linked to Alonso, De Zerbi, Amara. I've seen us linked to every manager, but yeah, yeah, with the moving parts. Are you are you not thinking, okay, if we get a manager that's not better than Ten Hag, we should just stick with him? You could argue that, but let's just let's just paint a picture away from football to give you an example. Let's say me and you, we both come into some money and we're like, do you know what? We like the YouTube thing, but we want to take on, we want to, we've got a plan for in 10 years, you want to overtake talk sport. That's our plan, right? Okay. So so we go, right, what we need is we need producers, we need directors, content creators, graphic designers. But we have a we have a we, we write this plan down, we create a business plan, and we go, right, we're gonna operate moving forward. Now, the plan doesn't have to stop because one of the producers that we bring in, or one of the content creators that we bring in doesn't do a good a job as we think he's going to do based on his CV or his history. You continue in that same direction. And this is the problem that I think a lot of football fans have. The plan shouldn't be dictated by the manager. The plan has to be dictated by the club. The manager helps to bring your plan to life. Therefore, if the manager fails, so if the new person comes in who on paper isn't as good as Ten Hag or on paper is better than Ten Hag, but doesn't improve us, you can take him out. You can bring somebody else in but everything else continues with an air of uh, consistency about it. That to me is, and I don't think football teams, same as when I was part of team GB, when it comes to kickboxing, continuity was key and you didn't need to change. If we had a coach that left, we didn't need to change every element and every bit of structure that was Mm -hmm. part of team GB. You'd have some different training sessions as an example, but team GB still dictated how it wanted its fighters to fight to a certain degree, but we had all had our own styles. They still dictated everything it wanted Team GB to represent. But a new head coach may come in, but they still had to listen to a, a board of officials themselves. And that's that's where Man United have gone wrong in the last decade. Every time we come in, we pretty much give a manager for at least 18 months to two years full control and power to change everything. And then you, you change the whole world it doesn't work. People become despondent internally and it all falls apart. And I've seen this myself in my own career. So when I worked, when I worked at Barclays, when I first joined, it was a really nice organization to work for. And then we went through this like seven or eight year period where every 18 months, somebody new came in, changed everything. Bonus structures, what we were targeted for, what we weren't targeted for, what we could wear, could we have facial hair? It literally changed everything. Like that down to minuscule things like, no more designer stubble. Yes, you can have designer stubble on your face. It was crazy, right? And all you found actually is every 18 months when it changed, people just became less and less motivated to try and help deliver because you just, what's the point of me focusing on getting us to the top doing, following this process when I know in 18 months you're changing again? You have to create the continuity. So I use my own experiences coupled with looking at what the majority of the the, the current top performing teams in the world do. And although they make mistakes in terms of their recruitment of players and managers, the plan doesn't change hugely each time. So I'm not that worried about who comes in as manager next. And I haven't been that worried about managers for about eight or nine years. I'm more worried about how we operate behind the scenes because that for me is key. 
That for me is far more important than who our manager is right now. Because without that stable foundation, the, the rest of it's irrelevant. There's no point buying the most amazing sofa and home cinema system for your house if your foundations are so weak that at any point your house is going to fall down and crumble because it's yes. all going to be ruined. And for Man United need to get that right. And when we do, then I'm confident whoever the manager is. Well, those are very dangerous words, though, because you say you don't care who the manager is. Like, fully so, don't so, care. Again, okay, so let me let me, let me me rephrase that. You, you are very right. Dangerous, you have language, 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 is, very language dangerous because you have language. Language is... Yeah, language is very, very key. Language is very, very key. You're absolutely right. So I do care who the manager is. Do I think bringing in Simeone, bringing in Inzaghi, bringing in Alonso to help start the rebuild of this plan is a better option than bringing in Southgate? Absolutely. What I mean by I don't care who the manager is, my first thought is, are we operating properly? You could argue, and the caveat, the argument would be that if you're operating properly, why are you going for a manager like Southgate? And that's, that's, a really, that's, 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 that's the that, argument. That is and that's, my a argument. Very, and that's a very fair challenge. So I think you need to, you are absolutely right to call me out on that. And I think that's that's fair. But I am looking, what I would say about Southgate coming in, I don't want him, but it depends who is available. And what I mean by that, say the ownership says, you know what, it's untenable to keep Ten Hag, he's got to go. Too many players don't like him, too hard to fix. If all those top managers say no, you, you end up, in, you, and, and again, if we are broken. We end up in a situation where we might have to bring someone in that only 20%, 30% of our fan base say, yeah, I'm happy with him. If we're stuck in okay. that position where all the top managers say no, that's then when I look at it and say, well, I, I'm tempering my expectations now. Now, what you'll get is standard FC say, but you've got to have the highest expectations. I do. But if all the managers that have the ability to get us to that level say no to us, what am I meant to I do? I can tell you've had enough of this expectations and standards that you've fully had enough. <laughs> I could tell the, you the problem is with the expectations and the problem is with expectations and standards is that we I have the same expectations as standard FC of where I want to be, but you have to look upon the reality of your ability to achieve it. And I, I, I it's like anything. I, I want my children to be the most successful they can possibly be, both in their education in, and in terms of sport. And my eldest boy Archie's a really good footballer. He, I don't know where he, I was an average footballer. He's really good, like ridiculously good. He's currently doing some stuff at some academies. Now, I would love for him to play for Man United. I'd love for him to be a professional football player. But I can't just set the expectation of become a professional footballer or I think you're shit. Because he yes. just may not have the ability to get there. But if all I turn around and do is set that expectation and judge him on it every day, I'm going to create a very mentally ill child as he gets older. I'm going to break him. And that's because you have to set realistic expectations based upon the skill set somebody has, the intelligence they have, the, the capabilities they possess. And if it's and, and, and if it's true that the top 10 available managers in the world say no to us, I can't then expect the same results from number 11 as I do number one. Only somebody who's a liar, because they don't really believe it, or an absolute imbecile, would think that that is a, that is attainable in any capacity. Yeah, but there is, is there any scenario in which you would you would say I'd rather stick to Ten Hag? Would 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 the would there be any world in which that statement like mm. is, is, is a thing? Yes, there there is, but it's it's nuanced in the sense of let's just say the, the, the there's if there's no issue with him and the players, so the players and him get on and they listen to him. If we mm -hmm. then stopped him from buying players. Mm -hmm. And the only other available choices were managers of Southgate level and worse. Then I would maybe advocate for it. If, for instance, so they're like, listen, that there's too much toxic relationships in that dressing room, then there's almost no reason to keep him because yeah, it's agree. almost impossible to fix. So I think it really depends upon what they find, what's going on, what the problems are. And it's, I don't think it's as simple as just his style of play or just winning a trophy this year. You have to, it's multi layered uh, what you have to look at as an example. Yes, Strasbourg, Steve. Big up, big up to, to Steve. I, I love this comment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Super Chats next, but this <laughs> standard FC think you could just grab Pep and put him in charge of the club. This is this is the thing. Well, I, I, I think I'm going to... Sorry, go on. I, I'm, I, I just, I just, I'm actually going to go... I feel like I'm going to go to war from this, like, summer onwards because I feel like as soon as Klopp leaves my club, I'm in a position where I need to explain to the people where we can keep us high standard but we can't have similar expectations to under Klopp until we build to get back to that level. And I feel like this is this is the issue here. There's there's steps. 
you can have that standard and you want to get to that standard, but there are steps. You can never look at the destination with ignoring the journey. That's my issue. There is a journey on the way. Some, some, some people take a way longer journey. Some people maybe have a bumpier journey, but there is a journey to get to that destination. You cannot just teleport to that destination immediately. That's, that's the thing that I look at with that. With yeah, the, 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 that. the journey is key. And I always view it, you know, someone that used to fight, someone that used to compete. I, I, my profile picture right now on my social media accounts is an old picture of me when I was in shape. And I'm, it's kind of there as motivation. And, you know, in, in the last few few weeks, I've been doing really well. I've been eating good. I'm fat. I'm, I'm following Uncle Eddie's eating diet diet plan off of uh, Instagram. Like it's basically eggs, vegetables, a bit of meat. Do you know what I mean? And I don't eat any more, in his words, fucking shit. Um, and I've stopped doing it. And <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I and I don't measure myself in weight. I never do weight because I'm quite a heavy person for my size. I just measure certain things in inches, you know, size of waist and everything else. And like off my stomach in two weeks, like three and a half inches has fallen off. So like, but I want to get back to how I used to look. But that picture, I was 26 in it, right? I'm 38. I'm not getting back into 26 year old shape in two months, three months, four months at 38 especially after like three or four years of not really caring and eating what I wanted and really living a good life. So it's going to take me time to get there. doesn't mean my standards are low. It's just my expectations are, temp are, are, are realistic are basically. and realistic. Yeah. That it's going to take me a certain amount of time. Otherwise, you know, it's, so I say to people, I, I was in the gym with this, this guy not that long ago and he was saying, Oh, I really want to lose weight. And da -da -da. I said, stop weighing yourself every week and like, do it once a month and set realistic goals and do it right in, in, in terms of inches and measurements as opposed to the weight that you are because it's such a hard thing to look at. And I, I think the world is, is full of people that view the world through a very simplistic lens in every walk of life, whether it's politics, football, business, um, relationships, and nothing is that simple. Nothing is nothing is the same. You know, no one person is the same as another in that way. And we have to be realistic with it. And, and, and I understand having the standards. And I think people that have high standards, it's absolutely fair. I have very high standards in all of my life. But you've got to be realistic. You in can't them ignore the steps. You can't at, ignore at the all, steps. At all times. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's, it's, and, 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 you know, it's, it, even I'm training my dog at the minute. And I've got a beautiful German shepherd. And I'm, I'm, he's just started police dog training. I, he's not going to become a police dog, but he's training with a guy that trains police dogs. Do I expect my dog to ever be as good as this, this This guy that comes to my house? He has like four German shepherds and these things, it's like they're in his brain. They do exactly what he says just by looks. Do I ever think I'm going to be as good as him at training a dog? No. So therefore, I can't set my own expectations to be my dog is going to be as well trained as his dogs because he's with his dogs all day, every day, and he's an expert. I'm never going to be a dog training expert, but I can get my dog to a very good level. But if I look at, do you know what I'm saying? If I set myself a standard of if they don't, if they're not like his, then I'm a failure. It's just ridiculous. Life isn't like that. So yeah, when it comes to Man yeah. United, we've got to have high expectations. We've got to improve how we play football. We've got to aim to get back to the very top. But we've been broken for a long time. It's going to take us a while. And um, there's a lot of work to do. And patience is going to be an important part. I, I do want to head, dive first into, into that as well in a second. Big up to, to Big Six Bands. Uh, my, my guy Monster says, uh, tell Exosam United are scary. Setting trends, uh, says mm -hmm. Monts. Big up to you, my brother. Appreciate you. Thank I you. have seen a lot of people, by the way, with pictures like this, saying Arsenal are scary, Liverpool are unstoppable. Like, I've seen, I will say this, I have seen a bar for bar, line for line. I've seen a lot of my spill recently across a lot of other people's social media networks. And you know what's good? It's fine. I don't. I don't own the word scary. I'm not crying about it. But you know what I love about her, Sam, is how I saw uh, Troops's comment earlier, like Mr. Clickbait. I get called a clickbait all the time. I don't like genuinely. I couldn't give a fuck. Like I don't care. But the the one that gets me the most, and we spoke about this privately, I get like abuse for a year of cer certain YouTubers. Bitter. You clickbait. Ah, uh, you lying to be. Uh. Now they're doing the same titles as me. I love it. I fucking love it. Do you know what I mean? I love it. It's, it's I great. noticed it. Yeah, I noticed it. You know, yesterday I was doing a special on on uh, on Sarkar and City TV. Shout out to Flawless, where we were yeah, just man. talking about the the journey and all this. And like, I I genuinely stopped and I just gave a shout out to Terry. And I always tell people just have your own experiences with people. Stop judging people off of what others tell you, because you'll just end up in a loop where you'll just get messed up you know so for me it's well, just... i always remember i remember the first time we met and we were backstage and you were like yeah i weren't sure whether i was going to come on i was like oh why you know quite a few people told me basically you know this terry's this bad guy don't work with yeah. him he's not very nice yeah. 
And I always laugh because the, 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 the most honest bit of feedback that I've probably had, I'd, I'm not exaggerating by saying at least 50 people in this industry is, oh, you're nothing like I was told you are. I must have had that said to me so many times by people. It's unbelievable. And yeah, look. It, yeah, it and, and I'll say this right now. Is. Look, Terry has been nothing but respectful to me. Uh, always considerate. You know, he, we, we even, we moved straight facts back almost three hours because of the of, of Ramadan. Um, you know, I told him to not invite me on betting or gambling uh, sponsored stream. And he knows that and he doesn't invite me or, or let me on. So like, it's just. He, look, always have your own experiences with people. And at the end of the day, there's some people you're going to get on with, some people you won't. And look, Terry's influence on YouTube, you can see it because there are many people trying to be, you know, the second version of the football terrace, essentially. But you can never bang like the first version. You will never bang like the first version. <laughs> yeah, but the yeah, you see that. It's, it's like when you look at bang. AFTV, the amount of people that have tried to do something similar. And this is what I would say to people. I, I, I don't. Don't copy what other people do. Do a variation of it. Do your own, but put your own stamp on it. If you just try and sound like somebody else, people will see through it. And the one thing with me is, again, not, not again, not a lot of YouTubers have actually met me in person because I don't. I, 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 there's a few YouTubers I've become friends with and I see, but generally I do my work and then I look after my family. That's that's the two things I do in this world. But it's like. I'm, I'm I'm pretty much the same off camera. <laughs> like there's no there's no facade if that makes sense. I'm literally the same person, other than the fact yeah. that I don't, I don't like to talk about football when I'm not on camera. I say to the boys when we go out, my like, boys can be fucking not. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. That's so I'm, true. I'm, I'm don't talk about football. Leave me alone. Which, which is why I defend Ben White, right? Because I understand why Ben White he, he trains all day, plays all the time. I kind of get why he doesn't want to spend all his free time watching football, playing FIFA, and reading the history of the sport. I understand it makes sense, but pe people that people are weird, man. People are weird. People yeah. are weird. People. Listen, are weird. at the end of the day, we all know who the OGs are, or who the the creative people are, who are the people with the original ideas, and that's just the reality. Big up Osama and Terry says E L C N. By the way, I see I see troops in the chat. Let me just. Yo, troops, I know you're still watching. I just want to show you something real quick. Let me just share screen before I just carry on the super chats. There's something that I want to show troops. Hi, troops. Hello, brother. Joey, <laughs> 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 Marvelly, stand up and rise. Yes, sir. So you lost to USA and you lost to Jordan, troops. This oh, my. Is, but look, look at it, though. But hang on. Scroll down a little bit. They were winning 1-0 from the first minute until the 96th yes. minute. Yes. Oh my days! Come on, troops, man. Ah, do you know Come what? On, I'm troops. sad though. I'd much rather see Jamaica win than than America, to be honest with you. Just I agree with you. Due to family you. connections, I, I actually really would. Like I would genuinely want Jamaica to slap the US if if I didn't know troops. Just because I know troops, I want I want the USA to beat to beat uh, you know <laughs> to beat them. That's honestly how how I looked at it. And you know, let me just share it one more time quickly before before just to just to double down. You know. Because troops is saying that he got robbed. They get robbed here, brother. They got robbed here, brother. <laughs> oh, yo. <laughs> him, <he's my> <laughs> I thought, Jordan, you got to the finals. I thought you weren't very good, but you've, you've done all right recently, haven't you, old Jordan? Yeah, Jordanian football has taken a, a turn to, 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 like, to rise uh, lately, and we've been cooking. We just beat Pakistan 3-0 yesterday as well. Troops, you're also you're also like half Pakistani as well, brother, or one quarter Pakistani. And we beat Pakistan 3-0 as well. So <laughs> like low-key, you're just having a bad week, you know. But hey, it happens, it happens. Speaking of Speaking bad of weeks when it comes to nations, have you seen all the um the, the flag shaggers who are angry over England changing the colour of the St. George's cross? Have you seen nope. all that? Nope. I, I don't understand it. Like I don't they basically Nike have changed. I don't know what the colors represent. They haven't said what they represent, but they basically said that, that on the back of the neck, on the collar, instead of it being a red St. George's cross, it's kind of got blue, brown, black, and a few other colors in there. And people are proper angry about it. And I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I'm English. I love my country when it comes, especially when it comes to sport. I'm not someone that's, I am patriotic, especially, but it's mainly about, I'll think about it. It's mainly sport I'm patriotic about, to be honest. I don't, I don't I'm not someone that goes, oh my God, this British inventor made this. I don't really care about that. It's sport only. <laughs> I, I did this a little while ago. I was thinking, how patriotic am I? I was like, 
I'm I'm proud of some of the things my nation's done, but I don't sit there and go, oh my god, it was an English man who invented the internet. Wow, I couldn't care less. I just, I'm glad it exists. Well done, you. Sport I'm patriotic about. I competed for my country, but they've changed. I'm, I'm like, there's loads of England kits where there's been a cross on it that hasn't been red and white. Why? Why now are we angry? It makes no sense to me whatsoever. I'm just like. Maybe there's no, there's no, there's nothing else to, to to talk about this week in terms of content. But I see talk sport, loads of people kicking off about it, and I'm just like, is it that deep? I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Not for me. I, 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 you know, you know how you know it's not that deep. I wasn't even aware of it. I, I literally wasn't even aware of it till you just mentioned it to me right now. So I didn't even know it was a thing. But you know, hey. You know, we live and learn. Yeah. Southgate would be going backwards, says Halftime Hooks. I oh, feel like... Halftime Crooks, man. What are you chatting about, bro? What are you crook. chatting about? Where's the beard oil? Uh, we know you haven't told us the beard oil recipe yet, uh, Halftime Crooks. But, bro, oh. this this thing is like... I don't know. I don't know. Terry Terry made a solid argument, to be fair. One thing about Terry is he, he knows how to make the solid argument that sometimes you just stop and just don't know how to respond to. And I feel like with the Southgate thing... I understand where he's coming from, as in, like, just change the chef. And, you know, we'll try get better ingredients. We'll try get better all of that, which I agree with. That's why my challenge to him back was like, okay, but we don't know if it's, if like this manager specifically is going to even be in, 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 in a better position than even Ten Hag currently. There is, there is an argument. There is a school of thought right now that says, keep Ten Hag, take him out of the transfer decisions. If, if, because the caveat is very important. If the dressing room isn't toxic, if, the, the, if there isn't, isn't any infighting, keep Ten Hag in the job and just allow sporting people to make sporting decisions. And that's it. That's, that's, that's what I'm saying. So, like, don't tell Ten Hag you're not going to get involved in any, any transfer decisions. We're going to do transfers. You do the stuff on the pitch. There is a school of thought that says that as well, to be fair. Yeah, look, I, there there is... That theory holds water. I'm not going to sit here and say it's complete nonsense and that couldn't work. It's not my preferred choice. I'm not convinced about that because I'm not sure about everybody's buy-in to Ten Hag staying. When I mean everybody, I'm talking about the players. But that also depends on what players the club are going to get rid of. So if there's four or five players that would not buy into that and stop it from working, but the club is thinking we're selling them all, then it holds more water. It's just not my preferred choice. There's a comment I'd love you to put up here from Bath Sport GA about me being toxic positive. I'd love to respond to this if, if I possibly could. Toxic amazing. positive, yes. Where is it? Who wrote it? Oh, here. Yeah. Yes. All his glass half full. But let's be honest, Southgate would ruin you. Again, but this is the thing. It's, I mean, I'm not toxic positive. So again, you've, you, you again, toxic positivity fans on the TPFs, again, a phrase I, I, I invented is where I'm so positive I attack anybody that has any kind of negative thought. That isn't me being toxic positive when actually I'm turning around and saying, I think we need to move on from the manager. Equally, I'm hearing other people's opinions. So you haven't even, you've, you've kind of tried to use my words against me, but you've taken it out of context. So there's a must try harder mark on that one. <laughs> Glass always half full. In, in, in what respect? This, but this is this logic. So I don't want, Southgate. I'm not infused by it. If he's our first choice, I'm fuming. If we end up having him because lots of other top choices say no, and that's all we can get, it's a different scenario. So you have to nuance this and add context to it to understand where I'm coming from. If it turns out we say no to Simeone, we said no to Zidane, we said no to Alonso, we said no to Inzaghi because we wanted Southgate, I'm not going to be half fall on anything. I'm going to be frustrated and then it's going to call into question everything else they're rebuilding because that feels like an odd fucking choice to me. But if he ends up being our seventh, eighth choice because nobody else said yes to us, then sometimes that's the scenario you find yourself in. We have to grow from that point, become a better team and then get a better manager. And maybe just maybe that's where we end up being as a football club because of years of, of fans, including me for a period, allowing the Glazers to absolutely ruin us. And yes, we, the fans, allow this to happen by funding them week in, week out. So, yeah, look, it's not about being half glass full. It's about looking at the scenario and understanding it. What I won't do is just slag off my club for the sake of it. I won't yeah. lie about my, I yeah. won't 
create lies about my club to be angry at my club about. So I won't sit there and go, oh, he's our first choice. I'm fuming when it turns out it was our 11th choice, but the other 10 said, no, I'm not going to lie about my club. That, that would be ridiculous. Yeah. Give Eric Ten Hag time. You can't make chicken stew without the right ingredients. You can't make these players play a system that they can't do. Ironic. I'll actually say something back to, to you, uh, Carla. Big up to you for the Super Chat as well from Singapore. I'll say this right now. My problem with this Super Chat is he chose the players. If you go to the market and you choose the ingredients where other ingredients are available and when there are other things that, you know, that are there for you to use to cook with and you decide to choose to get these ingredients and then you fail with said ingredients, it's on you, brother. It's not on anyone else. It's literally on you. Because for me personally, he bought these players. We all know these are... are uh, I think there's no manager that's had this much power at Manchester United since Ferguson. You know, so he's had so many decisions go his way and stuff. And at the end of the day, he has to live with his, with the consequences. Terry, thoughts on Sir Jim trying to pull a bowlie and only wanting to get players 25 and under instead of wanting to get ready-made world-class players? Where have you got this from, C? Is this from his statement that he doesn't want to buy Mbappe, he wants to buy the next Mbappe? You could interpret it the way you have. I interpret it more along the lines of Man United don't currently have the availability to spend three hundred million pounds to sign a player. Yeah. So instead of spending three hundred, I'll give you an example. I said in the summer, and I think so far proven right. We should go get Lavia. We don't need to spend all that money on Lavia. We've got Menu coming through. That doesn't mean we shouldn't buy better midfielders as well. But you always need a mixture of experience, players in their pomp, and up and coming players. And if you can bring in, bring through your own up and coming players like Menu like Garnacho and get them to the highest levels, they save you a lot of money that then hopefully you can invest in other positions. If you're just spending the money all the time, you end up where Chelsea are. Now, Chelsea's situation, they're stupid to spend it all on under 25-year-olds, but now they're in a position, I did the maths today, I was very boring today, I got my old banking head out and did the maths. Based on their average spend expenditure on players and salaries in the last five years, based on their average income, they eat... <laughs> Chelsea either, right? Chelsea either have to increase their revenue by nearly 300 million a year or decrease their spending from 681 million a year averagely on players, salaries, transfers, down to 312. I don't want to be in that position. How you get through that is by spending some money on established players, buying some players when they're young and developing them, and of course, developing your own academy players. You have to have a combination of of the two things. All the top clubs do it, including Real Madrid, including Barcelona, including Bayern Munich. Teams, generally speaking, have been run very well in the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, not so much in, in the last couple of years, I would say, with Barcelona. So it's getting the balance right. But nowhere has it been stated that Man United won't buy players that are over the age of 25. What we may not do is see a 31-year-old and spend 75, 80 million pounds on him. But we weren't, really, yeah. we weren't, doing, but we weren't doing that in the pomp of Fergie. Of course, money, not as much money was being spent in that era, but the principle is still the same. So you have to look at it from a point of view. Are you getting value for money with what you're spending? Because as we know, as we all know, there is not a bottomless supply and the new rules are coming in. So clubs yeah. in the Premier League in Europe from probably the start of next season, next season it starts in Europe, maybe in the Prem from next season, you're not allowed to spend on wages, salaries, agent fees, bonuses, etc., more than 70% of your club's turnover. Currently, Chelsea, by the way, last two years, they're spending 160% of their turnover on player expenditure. So they've got to drop a lot. Man City right now are spending 90%. Man United are around about 72%. Every single club is going to have to reduce how much it spends on players, how much it spends on salaries, to cooperate and, and be within this new rule set. Everybody, I think bar, in the top six, barring Arsenal, everybody else has got to reduce their incomes. So, uh, so uh, outgoing, sorry, when it comes to players or exponentially increase their expenditure so they're under that 70% mark. So we The need idea to... of what Todd Wall is doing at a smaller volume could work at Man United, but a very smaller volume. Like don't sign 20, yeah. don't even sign 10, five, four. Yeah, that, yeah that, exactly. That. And, and even then, I mean, they're... they're policy i don't think is 25 I, th I swear their policy is it might even be a bit younger than that but it's this it's, case it's, chelsea would have spent what they spent but within that there was four or five players that were 25 26 Experience. 27 yeah. in their pomp they wouldn't be 11th in the league right now they'd probably probably be a lot higher able to generate more income so yeah i'm not worried about the things that he said in that regard he's talking 
Sir Jim spoke very, very well recently. I agree with what he said. I'd love to go and sign Mbappe, but is he affordable? Is he attainable? Absolutely not. So go and find the next one. It should be Southgate is scary, Terry, says Captain Sal. Big up to Captain <laughs> Sal. I know he'll be in the comment section later as well. Big up to you, Sal. I like it. Malik I like Salinio. It. Big up to Ben who says, it felt like too many times Southgate let you down, Terry. One big uh, example is the Euro 2020 final. Oh, that was the worst game ever against Italy when they bottled the final. I really think Southgate let genuinely destroyed all hopes of England winning the game because I still remember watching England were battering Italy. They were battering Italy. They were destroying Italy. And then the cowardice side of, 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 of Southgate just took over and they ended up losing. It's just, I don't know, man. The, the way you watch that first like 20 minutes until Luke Shaw scored, you would have thought England are about to pump Italy 4-0. Honestly. Honestly, like. Yeah, I mean, I just, I have been let down. I mean, I don't enjoy his brand of football. I don't think it's Man United in terms of getting back to what we were. But yes, in, in the most, in the biggest moments, he has let us down. The fact that Sancho that was killing it at Dortmund at the time, Rashford and him got brought on and didn't get to kick a ball in that final. You then fast forward to the World Cup where Rashford was flying. Love him or love him, he was flying. And he got, what, seven minutes against France and nearly scored a free kick. If you'd have given Rashford on the left and Saka on the right, 20 minutes, 25 minutes collectively against that French team, in my opinion... We score another goal at least. We may stay in the tournament. We stay in the tournament. France got to the final. We could have got to the final. Argentina were really good. But nobody at that World Cup was unbeatable. But yet his conservatism, his conservative approaching games let us down. And I just, yeah, it's not so much about, it, it, he's let down. He hasn't hurt me per se, just let down. And I think that when the going gets tough, he has no bottle. Fairs, 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 fairs. Fair. Big uh, Hossam and Tell Prime fight shape Terry and Ultra Sig and coffee stimulated Hossam versus Mighty Mouse Johnson in a three round two on one MMA match. Who wins? <laughs> so it's like Mighty me and Terry versus Mighty Mouse Johnson. Uh, me, me in my peak. You, 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 Mighty Mouse Johnson, right? I don't think he's very tall, right? Mighty Mouse. I, oh, no, one meter sixty. So, yeah, I mean, he's, I'm like nearly 20 centimeters taller than him. You're 6'1", so we're both a lot taller than him. He's a small guy. What's his background? I, I know he is a fighter. He's 37, so he's my age. What's his background in terms of martial arts? Let me check here. So he's got a brown bro and Brazilian jiu-jitsu, so he's going to be very, very good at grappling. He must have been a wrestler. I swear this guy must have been a wrestler in his life. Yeah, wrestling, thought so. He was a wrestler. See, my view is this. <laughs> we won't be making a mistake here, right? If I trained in prime shape, my striking ability was pretty good, pretty good. If I'm in there, we're also with a six foot two. What level of wrestling did you do? Amateur. I had what, four what? matches. I won all four. That's yeah, but did you do it at school and college, university, those things? Uh, uni, yes, I did. Uni. And is it like big in your country, I assume? Uh, not really. Okay, well, okay. Uh, my country is bigger. The biggest sport in my country is judo. Okay. So I'm, I'm just trying to ascertain how good you were at wrestling. I think a really short, skinny guy up against a six foot one guy, you could just grapple with him wrestling wise. And while you're doing it, I'm going to be low kicking him in the legs and smack. Like, I reckon we beat him. I reckon me and you together, as long as you go in first and wrestle with him. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. As long as I get the tape done, then we have got. Wow. So this yeah, is terrible. Yeah. So you go in first, tackle him, and then we'll we'll do it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going toe to toe with an elite MMA fighter, not of my age, but yeah, I reckon if you go in first and grab him, and then I'll oosh, oosh, we get underneath, they give him a little bit of a slap, a few little people's elbows. Got yeah. him. <laughs> that is that is that there's an Arabic saying at the end of the day, too many numbers sometimes they beat the courage. If you're two people versus one. Unlikely the one guy wins. Real Madrid looking at Trent. Do you think he will go? Asks Andrew. Andrew, this is the Man United review. Leave me alone. I'm going to answer all these questions on straight facts. Thank you for the super chat. And I'm doing the Liverpool special tonight as well. So come come tune in to, to, to that. But um, I think Trent is like Bukayo Saka, is like all these players. It's very highly unlikely that he leaves. He's cows born and bred. He's cows through and through. 
and um, you know obviously he supports the club so i think it's a completely different thing if you told me van dyke if you told me mo salah i'd be a lot more worried trent no that's that's my honest answer um, big up to all my super chatters. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing. We're almost, um, you know, I'm not going to stay for too, too long. 20 minutes and then we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to redirect you guys as well to straight facts. So stick around. So with, obviously, Gareth Southgate, with the managers that we've spoken about, there's the other side of things. Obviously, Terry, a.k.a. the players. You know, the people have been letting Man United down this season. <laughs> you know, we have to say. Man United players. Um the reason why I've put Rash, I've decided specifically to put Rashford on 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 the thumbnail is I feel like he's been the most probably in media spoken about Man United player this season. With these Man United players, what do you think is gonna finally, once and for all? No, 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 we're not. No, we're not. Let me let's just let's establish. No, we are not. No, we are not. I am not. No, nope. listen. No, you took no. It too far. Took it too I, but, far. By the way, I wouldn't even get in there with Mighty Mouse. Like, on a level, I wouldn't even take the risk of getting my jaw spun. Brock Lesnar, he snaps us both in half and then does something illegal to the both of us. Like, yeah, he, he ruins nope. us. No chance. I would not be too, too far. Like, Never. if someone's short and he's like a flyweight, we could dare get into there as a duo, but. If you're telling me Brock Lesnar, bro, I wouldn't I wouldn't go five people against Brock Lesnar. No, I wouldn't. Never mind me and Terry. I would get five others with me. <laughs> um, so with, with the Man United players this season, what do you think is finally going to change the mindset of these players? The player power that we saw Roy Keane speak about, we've seen Gary Neville speak about. I think it was spoken about as well on Talk Sport two days ago. The player power at Man United, what, what do you think changes the... the they're like the the soul of the player power at, at, at Man United. I think some won't be saved. It, it doesn't matter what Ineos do, the, the, about the new stadium, new training ground, new manager. Some won't be saved. Some need to go. There'll be some individuals, though, that the announcement of this is what we're going to do to the stadium. It's going to be a 95,000 seat. Or it's going to look like this. New training facilities are being built. We're looking to buy this type of player. This is the brand of football that we're going to. Even just explaining to them, this is going to be the brand of football. These things can help to re-energize re, re and re-motivate players. We've seen it very recently with Newcastle, and a lot of their players have spoken about how there was a new sense of hope at being at the club. And a lot of players that looked like they were out the door ended up having a really good 18 months, two years. Now, they've kind of leveled out, and you've seen that they still really need to improve on that quality. But... I think Man United have better players than Newcastle overall, if I'm being honest with you. So I really think this is about getting into the hearts and mind of the players, seeing what they're motivated by, seeing if they really want to be at the club, seeing whether or not it's just a little bit of lip service and kind of going from there. So I am at a point where my mind changes daily on a personal level, but if I'm being really objective about it, I'm open for any of these players to leave, barring Hoyland, Garnacho. Mainu, Martinez, the lows actually really changed my mind this year. And that's about it. Do you agree that he's been your player of the season, Dalo? The low, yeah, I, I think he's one of them without a shadow of a doubt. You could, I think he has been, I mean, the, the craziest bit is he, he, Hoyland and Mainu are in with a shout of, of being that individual as well. But I would look at the low, I actually think. Varane has been excellent for us as well this year. But yeah, Delo probably is the guy, if I'm being honest. I'm just I'm racking my brains. He's done really, really well. And I think he'd be another individual again in the right system with a real structure where there isn't fucking holes everywhere. He would just improve. He would he'd be even better. You know, so yeah, look, there's there's a there's a handful of players that I personally feel like we have to keep. Outside of that, I'm open for anyone leaving as long as we're looking to bring in better because I'm I'm just I was never into this player FC nonsense. I think it's something that all football fans should look to try and stamp out. It's it's the opposite of what our game's about. You support the club first and the club always, as opposed to... Indiv there might be times where you back a player over the club if the club mistreats a player and you say, well, that's wrong. But that's still backing your club in the sense of, I don't want my club behaving in that way. But I always want my club to succeed more than any individual player. But um, Rashford could... I mean, they're saying he won't be. They're talking that there's no chance he leaves. I'm not 100% convinced. I'm not 100% convinced that if an 80, 90 million pound bid comes in from PSG, 
I'm not convinced that Man United, if there's alternatives available for us to buy, they should have resumed. still open, though, for Rashford? Yeah, listen, this is the one thing I will say, unlike a lot of people. If we put Bruno and Rashford up for sale today on the transfer market, multiple top six teams in the Prem and multiple big clubs in Europe would come in for them. I think they're very good players. I I believe they've been damaged in the same way that Pogba and Martial and everybody else that's come to this club has been damaged. I I, 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 I get really weirded out by people that say the club, me and Staffy always argue, we ruin technically gifted players. Well, if we stop the technically gifted players being as good as they could have been, who are better than the Rashford and Brunos, imagine what we've done to the players with less ability. <laughs> like, they must have been damaged even more. The logic dictates that if you're defending Pogba and Sancho and Martial with the club ruined them, the players with less ability would be even more hurt, wouldn't they? Because they need even more work to get to that level. So for me, it's very much a case of, of we just, the club needs to make the best decisions for the team, the best decisions for progression, as opposed to anybody's individual feelings. You know, I come from an, a Man United era where I saw my, my, the first team I loved, loved with, with Konchelskis and Hughes and Ince. We saw them sold for the class of 92 and everybody said it was crazy, including Man United fans. And that turned out great. I remember when David Beckham was sold, I, I was teased and wound up and bantered about it because he was my favorite player. Then we went and got Ronaldo and I, I, I always checked in to see how Beckham was doing. But I didn't care he weren't a Man United player anymore. I didn't care when Ronaldo left. I went, great, we move on. And I, so it's never bothered me before. It shouldn't bother me now. It's about the club, not individual players. And anyone who is player FC over the club, my genuine opinion is you're not a Man United fan. You're a Rashford fan. You're a Bruno fan. You're a Martial fan. That's great. But therefore, your opinions on Man United mean a lot less to me than someone that is a Man United fan. When we're talking about the betterment of our football club, not assessing a game or talking about how good an individual player is, when it comes to what's best for the club, if I know your agenda is... Because there still are Man United fans that every time they see a picture of Martial, oh, maybe he can come good now. It's like, let it go, bro. It ain't coming good. Like, it, it's done. I don't trust their opinions on what's best for the club because I feel their opinions on what's best for the club are actually what's best for my favourite player or what would get rid of the player I hate the most as opposed to what's actually best for Man United. I, I just don't trust they're being truthful. I'm afraid. Personally. I'm really afraid that the same thing happens with, with Nunez and Martial. I'm sat here nine years later and they're still talking about <laughs> Nunez is going to come good. It could, be. Up, it could, it could, it could happen. Yeah, it, it could, is. yeah. Yeah, because he's not as good as Anthony Martial was. Martial was a, technically as a footballer, light Literally. years ahead of him, but it doesn't mean you're going to make it, make it. That's it. Not even going to fall into your trap. You know, I'm not even going to fall into your trap. Big up, Rudy. Yes. <laughs> what oh, trap? <laughs> Big up, Aaron. Make sure you get light in the stream, as he's saying. <laughs> so that is a trap right there. 100%. That's a, that's a trap. I'm not trying to fall in. So Thank with... You. with with Man United, with Rashford. When I say, do you think his door is open to, to like these clubs? I, I'd say like, I think if they were available for sale tomorrow, probably Spurs would come in for them. Maybe like an AC Milan would come in for them. Chelsea I, would I'm, come in for him, easy. Yes, Place yes, true, true. I agree with you. Chelsea, Chelsea AC Milan, PSG, Barca have wanted him for years. Barca would look at him. Dortmund would want him but couldn't afford him. Bayern Munich would be interested, especially with a number of their players running down their deals. I, I, I truly, I look at the Prem. Arsenal would be interested because Arteta has loved him for years and wanted him. They'd, they'd look at, they're definitely, the only team that probably wouldn't sign it. I mean, even City, they wouldn't get him, but City, City would want to look because their left hand side ain't working right now. Imagine what Pep could do to him. Oh my days, it makes me feel sick. But you know, Liverpool and City would never get him ever, but everybody yes. would want him. Everyone wants him. It, it's, okay. it's, if he was available, yeah, but he gets slagged off, but if he was available, Suddenly, people would be like, oh, actually, maybe. It's like a lot of these guys you. online. You know, there's a lot of guys online. That's, I, I, they're not my cup of tea, but they slag off the, the only girl fans, right? And I'm not going to take this down a really bad path. And they go, well, I hate them. I hate them. I bet if those girls were to privately message them and say, let's go and meet for a drink. A lot of the guys that are like publicly disgusted by these women would definitely go and meet them for a drink. Do you get? That's how I feel people are with Rashford and Bruno. If they genuinely were available, it'd be like, oh, actually, this is pretty think i think i wouldn't be that against taking rashford i wouldn't take bruno personally but i would take rashford rashford i would yes i'm taking rashford at, at, at liverpool um so last 10 minutes of the show 
I just want to talk about the future of Man United. Where do you see your club? Uh, you know, headed into. We have 500 people in here, guys. Please remember, we will be redirecting to the football terrace. Myself and Terry are going on straight facts alongside Staffy. So obviously, it's it's um, you know an, an additional uh, as well United fan. But on straight facts, it's not just going to be a United topic. We're going to be talking Arsenal, Liverpool, Chelsea, Manchester City. We're going to be talking all the the news, the trend stuff. I'm obviously going to get asked about Yay. it. So there's a lot for for for, for me to to address as well myself on that stream. So stick around to it. So just Terry, final final question, kind of the last 10 minutes of the show before we wrap up. Where do you see Man United headed? Where where do you see the future of Man United? Because there are people in the Man United uh, kind of like circles that are already kind of doubting Ratcliffe because of the slowness of certain decisions, because of the certain names that you've been linked with, because of certain transfers, etc. Where do you see your club basically next season onwards, short term, long term future? I think next season will be a, a better year. I think we will eradicate a fair amount, if not all of the toxicity internally. I think we'll be a better footballing team next year. So there'll be those improvements in those areas. I don't know where we'll finish in the league or anything yet. We'll have to wait for the transfers and who the manager is. New stadium is something I think that will, will be, is needed from a, a revenue perspective. So I think we will be, we will be building a, Either building a new one or or redeveloping Old Trafford, I still don't see what the debate about that is. If you redevelop the whole new state, that the stadium is as it was, it wouldn't look the same anyway. <laughs> you might as well build a new one if it's a cheaper option. But I think we could build a, a, a 90, 95,000, 100,000 seat stadium, new training facilities, and just building for the next five years, I think is going to be key. That, that's what I want to see started over the next 12 months. For, for, for me because the club needs it and you know we're man united and as arrogant as this sounds we should have the best stadium in the country we should have the biggest stadium in the country because we're the biggest team in this country especially from a a, a, a fan perspective we are and we should be 110 percent aiming for that i think those things lay a marker down from the new ownership of how serious we are and where we want to take the club back to i'd love to see players removed from the club who don't want to be here for one reason or another I would like to see a style of football set on. This is how we're going to play football. We're going to buy the right players for it and bring in the right managers to coach it. And we stick to it and we and we make it work because the reason why I think beating Liverpool the other day was so beautiful is there was some really good football in it. The atmosphere was up for the first time in, since we, we beat City last January, really. That's the loudest I've seen Old Trafford. That is and it hasn't been like that for years. And it hasn't been that way for years because we're not entertained. We are not entertained with how we play football. So we need to bring, it doesn't need to be all entertainment. Winning is more important than entertainment, but you need to bring that factor in where we sit there and go, I like how we play. I enjoy how we play. That will also give you hope in any game, in any scenario that we can win this match. And we need to bring that back. And for me, they're all, these are all the early building blocks to get us back to where we want to be because that gives you a solid foundation to grow from. So remove the toxicity, set on the style of play, put the plans in order for the new training facilities, the new giant biggest stadium in the country, the complex is going to be built on. Start all of that because fans will buy in. Fans will get behind you if they can see that. It's hard to believe the Glazers, oh, we're going to change it this time. And they're saying that as you're sitting in a toilet, as you're standing in the toilet in Old Trafford with pee and shit all over the floor and the roof leaking. It's hard to believe they have your best interests at heart. So if you set all those things in motion, the fans get behind you. That helps lead to the patience. Then you've just got to get the football decisions right. I think Barada and, and Dan Ashworth coming in. I think these are master strokes. Let them cook. Let them do what they know how to do to fix the football club. Stick by them. And I think I think in 12 months' time, I think the way British and European football views Man United will be through the lens of, okay, they're not the best team around still, but they're going places. And I think for me, in the next 12 months, that would be that would be a very, very good 12 months indeed. And from that point, you start then talking more about winning things, trophies, et cetera, et cetera. I, I actually agree with what Terry is saying. People need to realize something. Man United are a lot closer to success than people think. They really are. Because they aren't that bad even as is right now. Um, you know, they've had their drop off for the last 10 years. If Jim Ratcliffe makes a series of right decisions, including the correct manager and the correct players, and, you know, having a certain objective in, in the back of his mind, 
I really think Man United could be back. I, I'm not going to... Look, the Chelsea train of thought says going to be back next year. I don't believe that. I don't think there's a world in which Man United could be back next year. I think you need probably two years, three years probably, max, where, where you can come back and compete, um, you know, for the, the, the highest honours type thing. So that's that's what I say about Man United. I think the future could, could be made bright this like depends on Radcliffe's decisions, you know, from from the the moment onwards. So that's that's what's yeah. on Man United. But anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up here. I don't want to stay for too too long. Obviously, we do have straight facts in 15 minutes, you guys. Stick on the stream, and it's gonna take you there. There is literally, there is. It's not a secret. Um, you know, Hussam goes on the football terrace. Yes, I do, guys. In case you're unaware, Fridays every Friday I'm there. So every single one of you guys right now. I want you guys to go spam in, in, in Terry's chat, uh, Southgate in. Not to piss off Terry, to piss off Staffy. So sp spam <laughs> Southgate in so we can piss off uh, Staffy. The football terrace, obviously, is where I'm going to go next. Terry, any final words before we wrap up, my brother? Mate, always a pleasure to sit here and chat. Great community you've got over here as well. Big up to everyone who's who's tuned in. And um, yeah, we'll see you in 15 minutes over on the football terrace for straight facts. It's uh, talking, talking a lot of things. Transfer race, a bit of England bit of internationals. I've got a great video to show you of Chelsea fans being absolutely condemned for complaining. So we're going to be going into the Chelsea scenario. So we've got a really good video to go through and get opinions on as well. So make sure you're all over there for it. It's going to be a great show. As soon as he said Chelsea are going to be there, I second it's going to be a great because I'm ready. I'm ready for these Chelsea frauds. <laughs> anyway, love you all. <laughs> And I'm going to see you guys on the other side. Big up to Thank Terry. You, Put people. In the description as well if you guys are unaware. So go subscribe. I love you all. Um, big up all my super chatters. I'm going to see you guys back at, at 11 on this channel. I'm going on the terrace now. So come, come, stay, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stick around on the stream. Peace out.